Hey guys, so in this video, we're going to go over the rules of integration. So we're going to look at common expressions and their respective integrals. So the first rule that we have is if we're integrating a constant with respect to x. Here a is a constant and we're integrating a with respect to x and the integral of any constant with respect to x will simply be that constant times x plus a constant of integration. So for example, if we were integrating the constant 2 with respect to x, the integral of 2 with respect to x would simply be 2x plus c. And again, since we know that integration is the reverse process of differentiation, we know that if we add any expression of the form 2x plus c, its derivative would simply be 2. Next, what if we had to integrate something of the form ax to the power of n with respect to x? Here, x to the power of n is being multiplied by this constant coefficient a, and one of the properties of integration here is that if we have a constant coefficient multiplying something, we can always factor out that constant coefficient. So the integral of ax to the power of n with respect to x is equal to a times the integral of x to the power of n with respect to x. This rule is referred to as the power rule. If you had to integrate something of the form x to the power of n with respect to x, we would increase the power by 1, so we would get x to the power of n plus 1, and we divide by the new power, so we divide by n plus 1, and obviously we have a constant of integration c over here. This rule is valid for all powers of x, that is n over here, except n is equal to 1. So for example, if we had to integrate 6x squared with respect to x, here, what we're going to do is we're going to increase the power by 1, so 6x squared will become 6x cubed, and we're going to divide by the new power, so we have 6x cubed divided by 3, plus our constant of integration c, so the result is 2x cubed plus c. So the integral of 6x squared with respect to x is 2x cubed plus c. And again, we know that since integration is the reverse process of differentiation, if we had something of the form 2x cubed plus c, and we found the derivative of that, we would get 6x squared. We would simply do the reverse process. For integration, we increase the power and divide by the new power. For differentiation, we'd multiply by the power and decrease the power by 1. Here we have another example. We have to integrate 3 times the square root of x cubed with respect to x. Here we can see that 3 is simply a constant coefficient, so we can factor that out. And x to the power of 3 under root is simply x to the power of 3 over 2. So if we integrate x to the power of 3 over 2 with respect to x, again we increase the power by 1, so 3 over 2 plus 1 is 5 over 2 and we divide by the new power, so we divide by 5 over 2, that's the same as multiplying by 2 over 5, plus c, that's the constant of integration, so our integral is 6x to the power of 5 over 2, divided by 5, plus c. The next rule that we have is closely related to the power rule, but here, instead of integrating x to the power of n with respect to x, we're going to integrate this linear expression ax plus b, the whole thing, to the power of n with respect to x. Here again, we increase the power by 1, so ax plus b to the power of n becomes ax plus b to the power of n plus 1. And we divide by the new power, so we divide by n plus 1 here. But we also divide by the derivative of the expression itself. The derivative of anything of the form ax plus b will simply be a, so we also divide by a. And then obviously again, we have plus c here, which is a constant of integration. And this rule also applies for all powers n except n is equal to 1. So for example, if we had to integrate 2x plus 5 to the power of 3, what we can do is we can increase the power by 1, so we get 2x plus 5 to the power of 4, and then we divide by the new power, that's we divide by 4, and we divide by the derivative of 2x plus 5, that's just the coefficient of x here, so that's 2. So then we get this expression, and if we simplify, we get 1 over 8 times 2x plus 5 to the power of 4, plus our constant of integration, c. Here's another example. Here we have to integrate the square root of 3x minus 7 with respect to x. Now the square root of 3x minus 7 can be written as 3x minus 7 to the power of 1 half. And we have to integrate that with respect to x. So again, we increase the power by 1. So 3x minus 7 to the power of 3 over 2. We divide by the new power. So we divide by 3 over 2. That's the same as multiplying by 2 over 3. And we divide by the derivative of 3x minus 7. The derivative of 3x minus 7 is simply 3. And this equates to 2 over 9 times 3x minus 7 to the power of 3 over 2 plus our constant of integration c. Now the last thing to note over here is that if we had to take the integral of a sum or a difference of terms, then that would simply be the sum or the difference of the integrals of each of those individual terms. So for example, if we had to integrate the following expression, where we have a sum or a difference of three different terms in x, we can simply take the integral of each individual term and combine them to get our final result. So in order to integrate this, let's first write everything in the numerator. So we have the integral of 4 divided by 2x minus 3, the whole thing squared. So that will be 4 times 2x minus 3 to the power of negative 2. 
plus two divided by square root of x is simply two divided by x to the power of one half. So that would be two x to the power of negative one half minus eight x cubed. And we have to integrate this with respect to x. And we can do that by integrating each of these terms individually. So for the first term, we have four times two x minus three to the power of negative two. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the power by one. So two x minus three to the power of negative two becomes two x minus three to the power of negative one. We divide by the new power, so we divide by negative one, and we divide by the derivative of the expression inside the parentheses. This is referring to the third rule that we saw. So we divide by the derivative of two x minus three, which is divide by two here. For the second term, we have two x to the power of negative one half. Again, we increase the power by one, so we get two x to the power of one half, and then we divide by one over two, we divide by the new power. That's the power rule here. If we divide by one over two, that's the same as multiplying this by two. And for the last term, again, we have the power rule here. So we have negative eight X to the power of three that we have to integrate. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the power by one. So it'll become eight X to the power of four. And we're gonna divide by the new power. So we divide by four. And of course we also have our constant of integration C. So then what we get over here is we get four divided by negative two. So that is negative two times two X minus three to the power of negative one. So that is minus two divided by two X minus three plus two X to the power of one half times two. So that would be four square root of X minus eight X to the power of four divided by four. So that would be two X to the power of four plus C.